So after importing all of your photographs and making sure that our output coordinate system and our ground control system are the same, um, and marking up all of our photographs so that we have uh, effectively marked the center of every ground control point, we're now to a process where we can start adding uh, what processing options would like. Um, so I'm going to run through all of these on my preferred settings. Um, I don't care, well, you'll need to click the advanced button down here to see all of these tabs that are available on the top right. Um, I don't care about the auto mosaic, it's pretty and it wastes time. Matching, uh, I tend to use free flight. Um, it slows down the processing, but it gives me a chance of more matches. Um, you can do all of the others for more efficient processing to reduce the load on the computer, but we don't care about that. Calibration. Uh, our calibration method here, because we're using PPK, is accurate uh, geolocation and orientation. Um, if we didn't have PPK and we were just using ground control points, we would pick standard. Um, and I'm optimizing all the parameters. Um, there's nothing else to change on that. Okay, so that's the initial processing setup. Yes, and I do a full uh, a full key points at, uh, at maximum. Now we go to two points. Uh, two is point cloud and mesh. So I tend to process everything at the original mesh size. I turn off multi-scale. If you enable multi-scale, it will repeatedly process with uh, smaller and smaller photographs in order to find matches uh, and points where it has areas of low definition. It's nice in that it fills in those areas of low definition, but it's terrible in that those points that it produces are, by definition, going to be less and less accurate. I would rather have a slightly scabby looking model that's missing holes than have uh, those holes filled in with fuzzy data. So I turn off the multi-scale. The rest of this, I think I leave uh, fairly standard. I use optimal density. If you're having a lot of problems with reflections, creating noise, um, you might want to drive the number up uh, to something quite high on this uh, minimum number of matches. Equally, if you're having problems getting down through trees, uh, then you might choose an unusually low number like three, sorry, two, in order to get a match down uh, where you're getting occluded shots to ground. Uh, I'd leave it at three. I might change it up to four. I hardly ever mess around at either, uh, any other extents of this. Um, so we'll leave it at three. Um, I want all of my last files in a single mesh, uh, a single file. Textured mesh, yes, I want to generate one. I don't care about it being terribly high resolution. It's just nice to have. Advanced, the important one here is to raise this to nine by nine pixels. This increases the load on the computer quite a lot, but it does allow it to find contrast areas in a slightly bigger part of the photograph. It's good, um, just generally do that. You can turn it down to seven if you've got a processing problem. Now the DSM, this is the digital surface model. We do want that. It's nice to have within. Uh, all of these are default. I don't change any of these. Um, sometimes you might want a DTM. Uh, the DTM is not the best DTM in the world. We might use it later on. If you are going to enable that, then you should make sure that when you're using your point cloud mesh, you classify the point cloud mesh because that improves the quality of that. Uh, DTM significantly. I'm not going to do that and I, well, I might leave that one as point classification to give me a hand later on when I'm messing around with the data. Um, you can do contour lines and stuff in here, but I prefer to do all of those myself later on in Global Mapper. So that's my basic settings. Um, and what we could do now here is uh, we could turn all of these on. Uh, and we could start processing here on the machine and it would eat up resources on the machine for probably about six to 12 hours for this size model. It's not a massive model at 800 photographs. Uh, what I instead prefer to do is when I'm at this point, I have an allowance on our Pix4D cloud for processing, which we hardly ever hit. So I've got a project and I'll upload the project files. And what I want it to do is once it's uploaded them, start processing immediately and I hit upload. And uh, even though I'm uploading the project uh, on the cloud, it does seem like uh, the Amazon data services pipeline that we use is a little bit slow. So this might still take upwards of three quarters of an hour to upload 